Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from MizraAutomation.com and welcome to another few updates on our automation framework development with Selenium C Sharp course. And today we are going to talk about Accent Reporting 4 with Screenshot Attachment. So this was something that we have not discussed because of the limitations with .NET Core support in Accent Reporting because Accent Report was not something that was officially supporting some of the features that were supported in the full framework, which is nothing but the .NET framework 4.7 and above. With our project being converted completely to .NET Core, we had few limitations and I have been releasing many new videos on supporting all of them. And this time we have the Extend Report 4 with screenshot support as well. So we can really do a screenshot attachment within our code so that we can see how it actually works if there is any failure in our test run. So the Extend Report screenshot that we are going to talk about today are going to look something like this. So Accent Report has an updated way to attach a screenshot. So there is a new class called Media Entity Builder, which makes it possible to work with screenshots. So do not just confuse with the Accent Report 3 way of working with the screenshot, something like the Accent Test dot add screenshot or add screen capture from the path, something like that which is not going to work this time. We should be using something like a media entity builder to attach a screenshot from either the path or from the base 64 string. So we can use any one of these option to attach a screenshot within our Accent Reporting 4. So it's going to be very, very interesting and easy to see how our existing framework can really be modified to make this happen. So let's quickly see everything in action for that and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to our Udemy course in Edge Chrome browser. All right, so now you can see that this is our most popular advanced framework development Selenium C Sharp course, which is currently hosted in Udemy. And we are in our 110th lecture. So this course, you can see that it's been keep on updated from year 2016 and it is 2020, almost four years. And the course is always been updated to the latest and the greatest of everything. And this time we have the Accent Report 4 with the screenshot support as well. So I'm going to grab the complete source code from here and it is available within my downloads folder. This one. So once you download, this is the project that we'll be getting. And I'll go to this C colon. I'm going to start pretty much like how you're going to be starting within your machine. So I'm just going to open this particular project, the solution. And there we go. The project has been completely loaded. So now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where the screenshot options that we had before within our project. So we have completely removed the screenshotting option within our project. The reason being it was not something being supported with .NET Core in Extend Reporting. And even you might have seen we are not really using the official version of Extend Report with .NET Core support. The reason being the Extend Report is not even being supported in the official version of .NET Standard. But we are going to be releasing another video pretty soon. There is going to be an update coming. So we are going to add that within our course as well. So this is going to happen as well side by side just to make your note of it. So as I told you, we are not using the actual version or the official version of Accent Report. Rather, we are using a package which is some released by Simply Test, a company uh, which has forked the actual Accent Report and they have made a support for .NET Core standard which can work with this kind of project because our project currently is a .NET Core project, right? Well, as that said, the screenshotting option. So in order for making that to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go all the way to the parallel config file that we have, this one, this class file, which is going to do the parallel execution for us and all those jars. So I'm going to modify the code a little bit this time. So in order for that then, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a method. I'm going to call this as capture screenshot and written model provider, something like that. I'm just going to get the string uh, name of it. All right, so you'll understand why I'm actually getting the name in here in a couple of minutes. All right, well, as that said, this is the one thing we should be doing. And then I need to take a screenshot this time. So the screenshot is going to be taken, which is pretty much same like how you do all these days by using the I take screenshot control dot. And you can see that we can add the open QA or selenium. And I'm going to use the driver object that we have for this particular class. That's the reason I'm actually using this class to have this particular method, right? And it makes sense as well. 
and then I'm just gonna call the get screenshot method and then I'm gonna return it as base64 encoded string which is something that we really require for our media entity builder to have the create capture screenshot from base image string as we saw in the slide so I'm just gonna call what is called as a media entity builder so this is a new class which is added in the event stock.xn reports so I'm just gonna use this guy once I hit dart you can see that we have something called as create screen capture from base 64 string so I'm just gonna use this method where I'm gonna pass the base 64 string which is nothing but the screenshot variable that we have over here so now the screenshot has been captured and finally once we have this create screen capture from base 64 dot string we also need to call one more fluent method which is called as build method so this way the screenshot can be built and be used within this extent reporting so this build method actually returns what is called as a media entity model provider so we are actually calling this build method the reason being it is actually returning as media entity model provider and you'll understand why i'm actually using this so I'm actually gonna return this particular media entity model provider for this particular method so we have to change this to media entity model provider in here so that once we call this method it is going to return as a type of media entity model provider so that's it so this way you can see that the method is over but just that final change is we're gonna make use of the name variable as well so I can give the name in here for the title so you'll understand why this name actually is while you see in the report all right all right so this is the only change that we are going to do for the capture screenshot and return model method and then let's turn our attention to the hook initialize.cs file so in here you can see that within our hook initialize.cs file we have the scenario contest dot test error not equal to null which means if there is any error happens within our scenarios that we have then we are going to be getting the uh, error and then this one will not be null and then it's going to capture the error for us right so in order for that to happen what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to call the screenshotting method that we wrote over here within the hook initialize dot cs file just for this particular code block so i'm going to call this as an uh, media entity which is going to be underscore parallel config so i'm going to be calling the parallel config that we declared on the constructor and then i'm going to call the method capture screenshot and return model method that we just wrote and for the name i'm actually going to pass what is called as the scenario contest dot scenario info dot title dot trim because if there is any space then we probably need to remove that as well that's it so this is the uh, unique name that we'll have for each and every scenario that we're executing and then we can pass this particular media entity for that so as of now i'm just going to use the scenario info if there is any error happens we can change that that's not going to be a problem at all well where are we going to use this particular media entity and, and why have we really written this particular code in here well if you see the implementation of the fail method of the extent test let's go over here you can see that it actually accepts what is called as a media entity model provider class so this is the one that we are interested in this time we actually have the media entity model provider that we we already got from our capture screenshot and written model method so i'm just going to pass the media entity over here so that it accepts that so you can see that within that particular step that failure which is going to happen it is going to grab the image and then it's going to store that image within that particular step in the extent reporting right well as i said now we can see that we have a screenshot in the base 64 format so you can see that now we can actually see a report which is going to be come in so that's the only change that we have to make in terms of the coding part and now the code should work fine and we already know that most of the scenario that we have are going to be working without any problems there is no uh, exception as such to happen and that's the reason what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make a scenario to fail so i'm just going to create a, a one more scenario in here and let's say once i 
click the uh, create new button I get an exception so for the create new I'm just gonna uh, make the first test to pass but the second test to fail something like create news and this method is going to be create news as well just control dot create a method so I'm just running this quickly because I don't really want to show some bad coding practices here I'm just gonna do that oops so it has renamed the name there so this is gonna be I'm just gonna duplicate it pretty quickly and this is gonna be news and this is gonna be new and the link create new is gonna be something which I need to duplicate basically so this one I won't make it uh, like fail so I'm just making like create news and this guy is gonna be news as oops this gonna be gonna be new uh, news as well so you can see that this particular uh, link is gonna fail right so now I'm gonna make this as news like this just to satisfy this particular condition and then it's going to take a screenshot for us because that's going to be failing right so this particular scenario is going to fail for us so i'm just going to say uh take screenshot uh one uh let's make it even more interesting i'm going to take the screenshot two time i mean two scenarios just to see if that doesn't really overlap or something like that i'm just going to save it and even for the login feature i'm going to make a failure scenario this time just for the screenshot purpose take screenshot once it clicks the login button I need this to fail so you can see I'm gonna make this as logins and this is gonna be logins so copy that paste it and this scenario let's make this as logins control dot generate a method for me and over here I'm just gonna make this as logins and this way I make this fail as well there you go so you got the idea now like how the code is gonna work because basically the whole changes that I made for taking the screenshots are gonna fail that's it so now you can see that it's gonna generate the methods for us in the meantime I'm gonna show you another nifty tool which is released by Microsoft pretty recently which is nothing but the Windows Terminal. So you can see that it's currently in preview stage, but it is really, really awesome to use for the development and for the testing purpose. So I'm gonna run the Selenium server in this particular terminal. This is very handy little tool because it has what is called as a tabbing option. And even you can run other operating systems or you can connect with the Azure Cloud Shells and any one of those stuffs right within this particular Windows terminal itself. So I'll show you what is the real purpose of it in here. So if I go to the uh, downloads over here, and then if I just run the uh, Selenium server role as hub. Now I really don't need to open one more PowerShell in another terminal or something like that. I can directly go to the new tab in here, and then I can just open something like this and then I can just change this to node and then I can run this so you can see that now two of them are talking together something like this pretty much like how you can do with the browsers and stuff this is very very handy and definitely is worth trying and this is currently in preview stage so there should be some sort of issues but make sure that you have the latest version of Windows which is 1906 and above uh, the current version is 1909 so you should be fine with that well, as I said, everything is good. Now I'm just gonna run the whole test and I'm also ensure that I have any screenshots and failures of the test. So you can see that it's currently launching the browser. There we go. You can see the test is currently running. There seems to be some sort of issues in the latest version of Selenium or maybe it's a driver issue. I could always see this uh, timeout receiving message from the renderer, which I'm not pretty sure about it but let's leave this for now. The tests are actually running fine without any problem. And again, you may be wondering that the currently all the tests, even though it is running in Selenium server with the Selenium grid setup, why does it runs only in sequential fashion? I understand your pain. It's very, very easy to make our project to run in parallel because we have already made all the foundational layer for that. In our next video, we'll be talking how to 
run the test in parallel but as of now with this extent reporting the screenshot we'll just live with it and we'll see how this works there you go hmm interesting i want this login to fail but it somehow didn't happen because it is in the logins method and hmm interestingly this particular logins method should have failed ah i know why because i did not really modified the identifier i'm sorry about that let me quickly run this again there you go now we can see that the test is actually failing as expected pretty good and now we should see the report along with the screenshot cross my fingers i'm just gonna go all the way where the screenshot is being saved so it is going to be saved under this particular folder location as usual so i'm just going to open that and there is this index.html file you can see that the size this time is like 682 kb so which means something would have happened uh, right so now you can see that the employee is over here and we have the image this time pretty good right you can see that we now can see an image along with a screenshot for the first time in our extent report with dotnet core 3.1 support so you can see i could see the screenshots coming and again don't think that the image has been missed you, you can see that it's completely realistic and that's the reason i made the login test to fail as well because you can see the different image this time you can see the image is now shown correctly so that this one is not working fine right so you can see they are pretty much working fine without any problem this time and this is pretty much expected so this is how you can take a screenshot with dotnet core 3.1 support along with extent reporting 4. in our next video we'll see how we can run our test in parallel and this is one of the questions which was asked many times like how we can make our test to run in parallel with dotnet core we'll be talking about that next and then we'll see how we can upgrade our core with the latest version of Accent Report, which has the support of .NET Core. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.